Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to turn columns into pricing plans with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to create a brand new page. However, you can use this technique on any existing pages that you have. All you have to do is to add a brand new section. All right, so I'm gonna come over here, click on add new. We're going to give our page a name. I'm just gonna call this pricing. And then I'm gonna click on use Divi Builder. Next, I'm gonna click on build from scratch. And then I'm just gonna close this for now because we need to start by adding a gradient for our section. So I'm gonna come over here to my section settings, click on background. And then I'm gonna click on the gradient tab. I'm gonna click here on this plus button and add my first color. I'm just gonna overwrite this. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And on that post, you can also download that actual design. All right, so now I'm gonna click on my second color. And this color here is going to be white. And now I'm gonna adjust my start and end positions. So my start position here is going to be 30% and my end position is also going to be 30%. And make sure you leave the gradient type on linear. Now let's head, head over to spacing because we need to give our design some breathing space. So I'm gonna come over here to the design tab, spacing, and we are going to add 200 pixels to the top and bottom. So I'm gonna activate my chain and this will automatically add 200 pixels to the bottom. Now it's time to add a new row. So I'm gonna save this, click on this plus button, and we are going to go with three columns. Now, before we add any modules, let's go into our row settings and make some uh, adjustments. So for First of all, I'm gonna come over here to the design tab, click on sizing, and I'm gonna activate my gutter width and set it to one. Now, what the gutter width is, is the space between the columns. So we wanna make sure that for our design, we don't have any spaces. So that's why we set it to one. Next, we're gonna come over here to our width and make sure that it's set to 80% and our maximum width is, needs to be 1,400 pixels. Now it's time to go to our column settings. So I'm gonna click here on content and let's start with column one. So I'm gonna click on this gear icon, click on background. And here we're also going to add a gradient. So I'm gonna come over here, click on the second tab, click on this plus button and we're gonna start by adding our first color and then adding our second color, which is going to be white. Now, this time, our gradient type is going to be radial. So I'm gonna click on this drop down to change this to radial and uh, the direction, uh, the radial direction is also going to be bottom, so it changed here to bottom, and my start and end position is going to be 31%. So I'm gonna add it here, and also add it on the, on the uh, end position. Now let's head over to our borders, so I'm gonna click here on the design tab, border, and my corners here is going to be set to 20 pixels. Now it's time to go to our box shadows, so I'm gonna scroll down here, choose box shadow and the option I'm going to go with is this one right here and I'm also going to add a color to my shadow so I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and just paste my color between the brackets right so my uh, box shadow blur strength needs to be 80 percent so I'm going to set it here to 80 percent now let's go to the scale so I'm going to come over here to transform so my default state here is going to be 100 percent for both sides bottom and right but on my hover state I'm going to add 120 percent so click on this arrow pointing up to activate your hover states click on hover and then just add 120 percent in here now let's head over to transform translate so I'm going to click here so I'm going to start off with the default state and the bottom, in fact, we need to change, we need to uh, break this chain because we are going to add different values here. So for the right, this needs to be set to zero. And for the bottom, we're going to set this to 34. Now let's go to the hover tab and here we need to set this to zero for the bottom and zero for the right. Right, so let's come back over here to default. Now let's go to transform rotate. So here, for the left, we are going to set this to 352 degrees. And then we're gonna come over here to hover. And on hover, this needs to be set to zero. Now let's head over to the overflow. So I'm gonna click here on advanced visibility. So the horizontal overflow needs to be set to visible. So I'm gonna change it here. 
and the vertical also needs to be visible. So I'm gonna set it here. Now the Z index, we are going to set this to nine and we also need to set the Z index on hover and we can set this to 11. Now it's time to go on to transitions and here we are going to set this to 500 milliseconds. That's for the duration and pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm gonna save this and now we need to go into column two. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon and as we did before, let's start with our colors. So I'm gonna come over here to my background, click on the gradient tab, and then let's start by adding our colors. So I'm gonna add, add my first color here. And by the way, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, my second color here is going to be white. Gradient type needs to be radial and my radial direction needs to be set to bottom and my end and start position needs to be 31% for both start and end. Now let's head over to the border. So we're gonna come over here to design border. We're gonna set this to 20 pixels. Now we're gonna to go to our box shadow, choose our uh, type and the blur strength. We're gonna set this to 50 and then we're gonna add our box shadow color. So I'm gonna scroll down here and click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color between the brackets. So the second column is our featured pricing plan. So when we do our transforms, this is gonna be slightly different to what we did in the first column. Right, so we are going to scroll all the way down here to transform. So for the default state here, this needs to be set to 120 for both sides. Now let's enter the hover states. So to do that, I'm just gonna click here on this little arrow pointing up, click on hover, and I'm gonna set this to 120, and this applies on both sides. Next, we're gonna come over here to advanced, click on visibility, set our overflows, overflows to visible for both vertical and horizontal, and our Z index is fine at nine. In fact, let's set this to 10. And our Z index on hover, we're gonna set this to 12. Finally, on the transitions, we're gonna set this to 500 and then save. Now it's time to go into column three settings. So again, we're gonna come over here to our background, add our first color by, by coming over here to the second tab and clicking here on our first color. I'm gonna replace what we have here by default. Click on the second tab, choose my color and this color needs to be white and my gradient type is going to be radial and the uh, position is going to be bottom as well. And then start and end position. We're gonna set this to 31. Now let's add our borders. So I'm gonna come over here to design border, set this to 20 pixels, add our box shadow, come over here, choose my style. Blur strength is going to be 80. And then I'm gonna add my shadow color by clicking on this little icon and placing my color between the brackets. Now let's head over to our transform settings. So here, everything is going to be default at 100% on both sides. And on the hover, this is where we need to add 120%. So I'm gonna click here, click on the hover tab. And here, we're gonna set it to 120%. Next, we're gonna come over here to transform translate, break the chain. And on the bottom here, on hover, in fact, let's make sure we are on the uh, default state. Let's set this to minus 34. So I'm gonna break the chain here, set this one here to zero. And now let's add our hover states and this time this needs to be set to zero. And then we need to go into the rotate. All right, so on the transform here, let's set this to eight. And then on the hover, this needs to be set to zero. Now it's time to go to the overflow. So I'm gonna click here on visibility, change this to visible, change the vertical to visible as well. And the Z index on hover, we're gonna set this to 11. Then on the transitions, we're gonna set this to 500. And then we're going to save. So we've done quite a lot of uh, settings here. All right, so the next stage now is to start adding all our modules. So I'm gonna start here by adding a blurb. So I'm gonna search for it, select it. So let's start by giving this a title. I'm just gonna call this individual. We're going to get rid of the text here. We don't need that. Next, we're gonna come to image and icon. And then we're just gonna make sure we click here on use icon, and then we're gonna choose our icon that goes with our first item. So for this, you can use any icon that you want that goes with the design you're working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one here. 
Now let's let's stylize our custom our icon. So I'm gonna come over here, click on image and icon. Make sure this is set to black. Placement needs to be on top. Use icon font size. Now this is important because this is where we can adjust the size of this icon. So I'm gonna make sure this is about 50 because I don't want it too big. Now let's go to our title settings. So I'm gonna come over here, click on this brush tool. This will take me directly to my title settings. So I'm gonna click here on default and set my font to Poppins. Alignment is going to be center. Our text color here is going to be black. And for our title text size, I'm gonna set this to 27 pixels. Now let's head over here to spacing and give this some breathing space. So first of all, I'm gonna start with my margin. So I'm gonna set this to 80 and save. Next, I'm gonna add a divider to this. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, search for my divider module, select it, and make sure show divider is set to yes. And now let's give this line a color. So I'm gonna click here on line, set this to black. Next, we're gonna come over here to sizing. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to change the weight, the weight to six pixels, the width to 14%, and we are going to center it. And for the height, we're going to set this to zero. Now on the width here, make sure this is 14%, not pixels. There we go, so that looks much better now. And lastly, we are going to add some top margin here, just to give this some space. So I think 50 pixels looks great. All right, so now that we've added all that, I'm gonna save this, and now we're going to add a text module by clicking this plus button, and I'm gonna search for it. In fact, it's right here, I'm gonna select it. Now you can add as much text as you want in here, because this is just going to work as my dummy text. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is to stylize this text. So I'm gonna come over here to design, text, change this to Poppins, font weight, we're gonna set this to light, and the alignment needs to be centered because everything else is centered here. And our text color is also something that we need to work on. So I'm gonna come over here, click on the eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this design, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Next over here, we're going to set our line height and it's gonna be 2.3. EM. Now let's head over to our spacing to give our design some breathing space. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and start with the margins. So my top margin here is going to be 50 pixels and then I'm going to add a top and bottom padding of 10 pixels. Activate my chain here to add my 10 pixels to the bottom. So pretty much we're done here. Let's save this and it's time now to add our pricing. So I'm going to save this, add another text module by clicking on this plus button, searching for my text module here and selecting it. So my pricing here, I'm just gonna call this $50 per month. Now it's time to stylize it. So I'm gonna come over here to design, text, set this to Poppins. Now our font here is going to, our font weight is gonna be ultra heavy or heavy. Center it and our text size is going to be 47 pixels. So I'm gonna come over here, set my size and my line height is gonna be one EM. So when it comes to the size here, you can always adjust it to whatever, you know, works for you. So in fact, you know, I've changed my mind. I think I'll set it to 26. Now it's time to go to spacing because we need to give this some breathing space. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and start with my margin of 50 to the top and bottom of 80 pixels. So that's all we need to do here. I'm gonna save it and add a button to this column as well. So I'm gonna click here to add my button. And the button here, we're just gonna call this uh, buy now and make sure you add a link here so that it links to whatever product it is that you're selling. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design because we need to work on this button here to stylize it. So first of all, I'm gonna center it so everything else here is centered and then I'm gonna click on button, use custom styles for button. So let's start with the text size. So here, we're gonna set this to 17. Our button text color is going to be black. And our button background color here is going to be white. Now we don't want the border here, so we are going to remove the border. Border radius, we're gonna set this to 100. And for our font here, we're gonna make sure it's set to Poppins so that it just matches with everything else that we have. And for the font weight, we're gonna set this to bold as well, make it really stand out. And then we're gonna to go to spacing to give this some breathing space. So I'm gonna come over here. And now on the margins, we're gonna set this to 50 pixels. And margin bottom, we're gonna set this to minus 40. Now for the top padding, we're gonna set this to 23. 
and left and right is going to be 70. So now, as you can see, our button is nice and big, and we also need to add bottom padding here. So our text is centered. Now let's head over here to our box shadow. So on the box shadow here, we're gonna go with our first option here. So now you can see the button really pops out and we're going to adjust our blur strength. So I'm gonna come over here and set our blur strength to 50. And then we're also going to change our color here. I'm gonna paste it between the brackets and then we're going to save. Now, what we need to do is to clone all these modules here and paste them in these two columns. So the easiest way to do this is just to come over here to uh, wireframe mode and then just duplicate and drag them over to the other column. So I'll just do one and then you can just do the rest. So I'm gonna click here, drag this over here, click one more time, drag it over to the right and then just do the rest with the rest of these modules. So this is how this should look. And if we switch over here to our desktop mode, this is how our design looks like. So now what you need to do is to go in, change the pricing, change the icons so that they all look unique. So I'm gonna change this to professional and this one here to enterprise. And we can also go in and change these icons. So I'm gonna come over here, image and icon. So that's gonna, be, that's gonna be the icon I'm gonna go with and then come over here, choose my icon as well. So I'm just gonna drag here. So for enterprise, I'm gonna go with this one save that and over here as well you can change the um, the pricing so let's say this could be maybe 99 save that and this could be maybe 299 so what you can also do is to go in and change the contents here in the description so that everything is unique so now we're going to save and publish and then let's test and see if this is working okay so I'm gonna exit my Visual Builder here. And now you can see here, my animation is now working. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.